Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KOA on Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. This show is made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS, beatirs.com, serving Alaskans and Americans since 1978 with two generations of tax defense attorneys. We have online with us Dr. William Matt Briggs. He's been on this program before. He's a contributor to the stream. He's also an adjunct professor in statistics at Cornell University, a writer, philosopher, scientist, lives in Manhattan, New York. He focuses on the philosophy of science, the misuses of uncertainty, the corruption of the science, and false predictions. And before entering academia, Dr. Briggs was a cryptologist for the U.S. Air Force and worked in weather and climate forecasting as a climatological scientist. He received his Ph.D. in statistics from Cornell University. You can follow be followed on Twitter at, at @mattstat. Dr. Briggs, thanks for joining us again and talk to us about global warming today. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. So a few interesting developments since the last time we talked. Of course, we've got folk blaming global warming for terrorism. We've got the Global Climate Change Conference going on in Paris. And you wrote a very interesting article about what's pushing all this thing. And it turns out it may actually be the money, as it seems to always be. Uh, You've mentioned a study by Yale's Justin Farrell that talked about why we end up with the type of conclusions we have. Uh, He was a sociologist, as you put it, with no training in the physical scientist and was puzzled why Americans think the world is not doomed by global warming. Tell us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit about what you think drives this whole thing, and we'll go from there. Oh, it's undoubtedly money. This this feral guy, he looked out amongst the populace, and he was amazed that most people, which it now is, most people don't seem to care too much about global warming. He didn't figure out that after 20, 30 years of prophecies of doom, you know, saying the sky was falling and nothing happened, that didn't have anything to do with it. But what he discovered to his own satisfaction was that these private groups are spending their own money to say that things are not as bad as they have been predicted. But that's, which is, which is absurd. Everybody knows that there are private groups saying it's not as bad as has been predicted. We're doing that right now. We're saying it's not as bad as they've been saying. Right. Uh, yet, you know, how much money is in it for us to say this kind of stuff? Almost nothing. But what he doesn't understand is Farrell. He didn't. He, he, he called his results science. But he didn't look at uh, his side of the thing. He, for instance, himself has a very healthy grant from the EPA, $126,000, to do just these kinds of studies. So that kind of money he sees as pure. And all the money that goes to Greenpeace, the Sierra Club, and Nature Conservancy, World Wildlife Fund, and Environmental Defense Fund, the Climate Project, the EPA, the National Science Foundation, National Institutes of Health, the Departments of Commerce and Agriculture, pretty much every university department there is, every think tank, every, you know, ABC, NBC, CBS, all the major mainstream medias, all of those people, if you put them together, he forgot about them, as if they have absolutely nothing to do with this care. And there was a very interesting thing, if you look at the money, I myself, like I say in an article, over my entire lifetime, have uh, received in the low four figures from all sources uh, from my work in climatology. It just does not pay to be a skeptic. But the government and these green groups have put out over $79 billion over the last decade alone promoting them. The grants, the way they're written, they have an, an end result, an objective in mind. In other words, if you counter the parameters of the grant or if you come up with a conclusion which is against the the dominant theory regarding global warming. Are you going to get any more grants? That's exactly right. You you you're, you're not. Government they put out these grants. They call them, you know, they have a call for action kind of a thing. And they say, "Here's what we'd like to see." They claim they don't want the they don't dictate the results. They say, "Here's what we'd like to have somebody do, and here's the parameters of it, and here's the findings we'd more or less like to see." And then people bid for these grants, and they're awarded to those people who say they can provide those answers in the best way possible. Well, the government then becomes an interested source, just as a private company does. The government is no less interested. Their money is no less painting than anybody else's money. Only the thing is with the government is they have a whole lot more of it. Right. (laughs) 
it seems like the truth is no issue for what they actually are trying to achieve through these grants either. The government is involved in not just obviously through creating the science through the grants, conclusions about global warming. They're also, of course, another avenue that they're using is what they speak to the people. And there recently have been some linkages made between global warming and terrorism. Can you tell our audience a little bit about that and whether or not you think that that's an accurate correlation? No, it's preposterous. It's absolutely stupid. Uh, they, they, they had to have an excuse to say what happened in Paris. These, uh, you know, Islamic terrorists came and shot up the place, killed a bunch of innocent people, and they can't say that it's due to, uh, you know, militant Islam because that would be Islamophobic. You have to instead say it was due to some other cause. It has to be our fault somehow. And that turned out to be because they claimed climate change or global warming. Only the problem is in Syria, for instance, where these terrorists originated, uh, it's doing just fine. The weather has been around normal, around average. Their uh, wheat production is up. Uh, they're not in any kind of food shortage. There is something else going on in Syria, of course, that has nothing to do with the climate that everybody is looking up. But that sort of stuff is unspeakable. You have to blame it, uh, these actions, these bloody terrorist actions, on global warming, which is absurd. And it's even more absurd right now. All of these world leaders are in Paris right now, gathered. You know, they had to file past the coffins of all those dead bodies and say, as President Obama said, this is a rebuke to the terrorists that we're still going to hold this climate conference. It's, you know, I, I call it a French farce. It's beyond absurd. It's comedy from start to finish. But you're right to suggest that the money has something to do with it. Angela Merkel, the, the boss of Germany, Chancellor of Germany, said today, she said, we hope to now do what we could not do in Copenhagen, the last big conference is to give away $100 billion a year of your money to uh, less fortunate countries, countries which are suffering from climate change, so-called climate change. So that's all this thing is, really. It's a in, it's a income redistribution or wealth redistribution scheme that somehow our leaders or our current leaders are anxious to give away hundreds of billions of dollars over the years the countries who have their hands out and say that they're suffering from climate change. Now, this is the problem. With so much money awash in the system, who's going to say no? Everybody's going to say, yeah, you know what? We really are suffering from global warming. We really need this money. And places like India, which are you know up and coming economic powerhouses, they're saying, you know, this $100 billion, even if you give us $100 billion, that's just the start. That's just to pay the for the sin tax, for the, the, the harms that you have caused before. You really need to give us more. So all of these countries have their hand out. Half of the countries have their hand out. And for some reason, our country, Germany, France, England, all are ready to give away billions upon billions of dollars. Why is that? Yeah, Merkel's been a big disappointment. I mean, she's gone not just soft on that type of issue, but also on the refugee issue. Really uh, makes you think that uh, she's not the conservative people made her out to be when she was first elected. But going to the kind of the broader topic of what's going on with this idea of redistribution, I don't want to get too far off the global warming topic. What's the drive there? I mean, why do you think that there is such an effort of the industrialized nations to transfer wealth to the lesser developed countries? Well, uh, part of the reason is, is they get to be in charge of this. So that's a lot of money, and with that money comes a lot of power and responsibility. So they want to have a sort of supranational uh, organization either managed through the U.N. or their own auspices that does this kind of stuff. So, you know, if you're going to be handing out trillions over 10 years, this is a trillion dollars as a start. That's huge. I mean, that's, uh, the si- that's more than the size of most countries' economies. So it- it's the old, you know... It's the old saying, the love of money is the root of all evil. And and that's all it is here. It's nothing, you know, there's no uh, fancy story. And unfortunately, it's just uh, lust for power, greed, the standard. Uh, I've theorized also that the redistributive policies are designed to equalize income and wealth in the nations to help facilitate internationalism. I mean, you touched on it a bit with the control of money, uh, but 
the reality is a lot of these folk, what they ultimately want to see is, you know, the sovereign borders torn down, one mass system, and how better to do it than to have equalized income across borders. You know, one of the things that, as we close out this segment, I wanted to touch on just briefly, the issue regarding how the science doesn't back up global warming. There just recently a study out that came from Europe suggesting that we're headed for a mini ice age. A group of European scientists saying that solar cycles suggest that that's where we're headed, and it could be a decade long or longer. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show. Dr. Briggs will be with you right after this. Welcome back to the Joe Miller Show, KON Hot Talk, 1080 AM, 95.1 FM. This show is made possible by the McPherson Tax Defense Group, 1-800-BEAT-IRS-BEAT-IRS.COM. We have with us Dr. William Matt Briggs, a contributor to the stream, focusing on scientific analysis and commentary, adjunct professor at Cornell, has his Ph.D. in statistics from Cornell, has worked in weather and climate forecasting as a climatological scientist, and was also a cryptologist for the U.S. Air Force. Very active, involved on the global warming topic, others as well. Thank you, Dr. Briggs, for staying with us. My pleasure. So we were talking about during the break issues regarding jihadists. Of course, comment last segment you did on how there's now this blame game that global warming is and somehow causing jihadism. Of course, you know, the left and other members of the ruling class have blamed economics as well, that, you know, if they just had opportunity and jobs, they want to kill us. There's been speculation. Uh, there's a CIA, acclaimed ex-CIA guy that did a briefing that I heard. This is several years ago. And he suggested that the United States government is using jihadists to destabilize our enemies, uh, that we recognize in the western part of China, that they're effective in creating instability issues for China. Obviously, southern caucuses of Russia have been displayed there before. Now we're using them, and of course it's after this briefing, but now it appears that the Obama administration is actually using jihadists to undercut a Russian proxy, Assad, in Syria. Do you think that our government actually knows, uh, that our leaders, I should say, they know that these jihadists are motivated by ideology, that it's not some sort of underlying issue like global warming or economics, and that they're just using them for those type of purposes that I described? They, they absolutely, either they're utterly incompetent, and we can't rule that out, especially among bureaucrats, or they're lying. And the reason is simple. Global warming could not have caused terrorism for the very simple reason that there has been no global warming for the past 20-some years. The temperature has bounced around a little bit, but it hasn't increased. Therefore, that which did not happen could not have caused these people to become uh, ideologues and uh, start shooting up people. It's absurd. Therefore, to claim that this is happening, when you know there's been no global warming, you, is a lie. There's no other better way to put it. It's quite simply a lie on their part. Or they're just incompetent. They believe that predictions have power to cause people to become radicalized. I don't know. That seems to me... Well, and of course, I mean, speaking of predictions, we mentioned last segment the European researchers who unveiled a model showing that Earth is likely to experience a mini ice age from 2030 to 2040. This just came out a few days ago. You're a climatologist. You've worked in this area of predictive weather patterns. I mean, what, what is the science? Give us some, just some cold, hard facts about what's happened and what, uh, you know, the evidence is pointing to as far as our future goes. It's funny. I mean, uh, when these Global warming scare first started about 30 years ago. These uh, groups of international scientists got together and they wrote this report for the world to see, the world politicians to see. They gave almost no consideration to the sun. They thought the sun's importance was constant, or that is to say nothing that is happening on the sun is of any great interest. And as the years went by, they've been forced to concede a larger and larger portion of the control of our climate to the sun. After all, the sun is where we get all of our energy from. There'd be no temperature on Earth at all if it wasn't for the sun. So the problem is um, the sun is inherently difficult to predict. 
Um, there is there are these things called sunspots, and they alter the amount of radiation that we ultimately get on Earth. Uh, the times that we get it, and the places that we get it, and this kind of thing. So, if we're able to better predict the sunspot cycle, which runs as a, a roughly 11-year cycle, and there are greater cycles on top of the 11-year cycle, if we are somehow able to predict that better, we'd be able to predict how much more or how much less radiation that we're getting from the sun. And now what is happening is that some researchers claim that they have a better model for predicting the amount of sunspots. Uh, they predict we're coming into a period which would be a minimum. And a minimum uh, means that we're going to get less solar radiation. And if that's true, then the temperature on Earth would drop. It'd have to drop because we wouldn't be getting much energy from the sun. Well, um, maybe that's true. It's certainly plausible. We don't know yet. We have to wait and see and verify those forecasts. But at least it makes sense. It makes physical sense. What doesn't make physical sense is how the models now, how the, the mainstream climatologists now handle carbon dioxide, which is the satanic gas. The problem is carbon dioxide by itself would, if we added more to the atmosphere, would only increase the heat by a little bit at the lowest levels of the atmosphere, just a tiny little bit. So in order to get these forecasts of doom, what they had to do is they had to go in and say, you know, it's not just going to be carbon dioxide. It's going to be carbon dioxide affecting, affecting all of these other systems. And they create what is called a positive feedback system, so that just a little increase in carbon dioxide has greater and greater changes on the temperature. And that's not really uh, known whether or not it's true. This was a supposition on their part. And they decided, and the only way we know how to test that supposition is to create forecasts, which we've done now, and see how well those forecasts align with reality. And the problem is, they don't. They don't align. The, the, the reality is the temperature has been, oh, relatively steady for the past 20 years. But the forecasts have been for increasing and ever-increasing temperature. Therefore, we know, it is certain, that something is wrong with these models. And it's probably, we don't know for sure, but it's probably because of the way they handle carbon dioxide in this positive feedback way. And they probably don't take full account of, uh, of what the sun is doing. And despite the fact that the facts don't match the models, the end result of all of this, the studies, you know, the, the trumpeting by the bureaucrats that the sky is falling, there are extreme costs that are being proposed, uh, not just on this country, but internationally. And those costs have real impacts, demonstrable impacts on people. It's a cost-benefit analysis that these folks fail to do. And maybe they just don't care about the adverse impacts on people. The main thing they're concerned about is control. What do you think? That's absolutely right. I, I pointed out uh, a century ago, in the year 1900, uh, I don't know, about uh, uh, an eighth of a million, 120 some, 150 some thousand people died um, from drought. And that's very bad. But last year, the year 2010, we couldn't find anybody who had died from drought. Now, what's the big difference between the year 1900 and the year 2010? Well, the population was a lot larger, but our technology was better. And our technology was better because of the reliance we have on cheap, reliable fossil fuels. So we can mitigate. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to give more control to the government. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. Appreciate your insights on that. We'll probably have you back to talk more about this in the future. Stay with us. The Joe Miller Show. Be right back.